Welcome to week nine of the fifth quarter. I'm Katie Wolfong. We have some good news. Garden Grove High School is ranked number one in their CIF division going into tonight's game against Los Amigos. Here at Bolsa Grande Stadium, Rancho Alamitos is trying to earn their spot in playoffs so they can't afford to lose. Let's get right to the action. It's family night for the Rancho Vaqueros as they take on the Bolsa Grande Matadors at Bolsa Grande Stadium. Here's quarterback Mike Frank with his entourage and linebacker Victor Arias with his crew. First quarter, Jake Flores tosses the ball to Juan Chun and he pushes through for a first down. Minutes later, Rancho is banging on the door and Bolsa's defense keeps it shut tight when Frank passes to Steven Silva, but Alex Espinoza isn't about to let anything happen in his house. With 30 seconds till the half, Frank hands the ball to Miguel Carrion for a six-yard touchdown. The cheerleaders love that one, and so does Paco. Second quarter, backs up by seven. Frank connects with Brent Wisdom for this great catch. Four plays later, the pair does it again for a seven-yard touchdown pass, putting the Vaqueros up 14-0. Bolsa's Flores goes long for Espinoza, but Emmanuel Amador swoops in and steals it. His teammates couldn't be happier, and you can't blame them when it leads to this 36-yard touchdown pass from Frank to Juan Cruz. He almost makes it look easy. Coach Mike Enright likes that too. 21 0 Rancho. Bolsa fights back on this kickoff return. Oscar Scovia picks it up and goes 64 yards for a touchdown. Rancho's Rene Alvarado tries to catch him, but he gets away. Score is now 28 8 after a two point conversion. Both sides put up a strong defense. Frank gets sacked by Bolsa's Victor Carranza, and soon after, Rancho's Oscar Gomez takes down Flores. Just seconds before halftime, the Matadors take action and Flores looks for an open, doesn't see one just yet, then goes for a long one to Jesus Esparza for a 21-yard touchdown pass. Esparza also gets the extra point. The Rancho Marching Band played some Indiana Jones during halftime. What a cool performance that was. The Vaqueros go on to score two more touchdowns in the second half to make the final score 49-15. Next week, Rancho will play La Quinta and Bolsa Grande will take on Los Amigos. Ever wonder how young girls learn to be cheerleaders? Apprenticeships. Garden Grove cheerleaders are bringing up the next generation. On the turf, it's Los Amigos versus the undefeated Argos at Jason Field. Garden Grove establishes the defense early. Here, Jose Perez is caught in the backfield by Christian Trejo for a loss. The Lobos have to punt. Argos advancing, Sean Young flips to Trejo and he bowls his way to a 12-yard gain. Then Young keeps for a 13-yard touchdown run. It's 7-0 Grove. On the next drive, Daniel Hernandez goes high and long, but Josh Webb steps in front of the pass and coach says, go to the house. He does just that. It's a 20-yard return for Webb and a touchdown. Argos up 14-0 in the early going. Still first quarter, Hernandez fires for Quan Tran on the left sidelines. It's complete for 10 yards and decent field position. Second quarter, Hernandez looks to pass, but they're not open. He tucks the ball and runs down the middle for the 14-yard score. That cuts the lead to 14 to 7. It also inspires one guy's crazy dance on the Lobo side. The Lobos play some defense. Here Alex Lopez takes down the scrambling Josh Sepulveda. No gain on the play. But that didn't happen often enough for Los Amigos. Here Young airs it out to Joaquin Reynoso for about 30 yards. That sets up a 15 yard keeper by Young around the left side. He's untouched into the end zone for the score. The point's no good. 20 to 7 Garden Grove. On fourth and one, number 42 gets the call. He wasn't on the roster, but he gets the first down and a few more on a nice run down the middle. The Lobos have to punt, however, and it's blocked. That puts the Yagos in good position once again. Trejo does the honors here from five yards out. Lobos blocks the point after try, and it's 26-7 Garden Grove. That gets the Garden Grove cheerleaders and the intern corps on their feet and cheering. The score is 33-7 into the half and grew to 60-7 by the time it was over. Grove remains undefeated going into its contest with Santiago next week and Los will take on Bolsa Grande. Let's go out to reporter Gaston Castellanos for the Santiago La Quinta highlights. The Garden Grove Argos are number one in CIF rankings, but the Santiago Cavaliers are number seven. Here they're taking on the La Quinta Aztecs. La Quinta starts the game with an onside kick and the Cavs down at midfield. The first play from scrimmage, running back Julian Martinez runs through the hole untouched into the end zone, 7-0 Cavaliers. Second quarter, coach Aaron Sheristani talks strategy with quarterback Chris Ortega. 
Next play, it looks like it works. Ortega connects with Juan Sanchez for the score. The Aztecs have yet to answer and trail 14 to zero. The Cavs then widen the lead 20 to zero when Edgar Jimenez blocks a punt and scoops it up for the touchdown. The Cavs strike again after a three yard run by Martinez for the score and Santiago is running away with it 27 zero at the half. The Santiago fans are loving this game and entertained beautifully during halftime. Third quarter, another blocked punt. This time it's Laquinta's Andoni Hernandez who gets a hand on it. Ryan Parsons jumps on the ball for the score. 27 to seven, Cavs. Fourth quarter, Santiago's response is immediate. Next possession, Ricky Espinosa gets the ball and scores from 46 yards out. Cavaliers lead 33 to seven. A final Laquinta score comes after this 50 yard pass from sophomore Darren Wynn to Brandon Guillory. Cavs win it 33-14 and set up a showdown with undefeated Garden Grove next week. This is Gaston Castellanos reporting. Congratulations, Preston. Thanks for that report, Gaston. Yes, it was a little chilly for the Pacifica game with Cypress at Handel Field, but not too bad if you have the right headgear. Both teams are 3-0 in the Empire League. First quarter, Cypress quarterback Zach Ortiz rolls left and hits Jared Cohen with the pass. Cohen lunges forward for about 15 yards to the 10. Next play, Ortiz hands to the fleet-footed Akili Muhammad. He goes around the right side for the score. 7-0 Cyprus. When the Centurions kick off, Mariners Joel Willis bats the ball down around the 9-yard line, then he picks it up and takes off. He goes about 85 yards before he's brought down with a diving tackle. Preston Knowles scores on a one-yard run play and Pacifica is back in the ball game. They fail to convert, however, and Cyprus leads 7-6. Muhammad proved very tough to bring down for Pacifica. Here he breaks loose for about 20 as the Centurions are marching again. When one touchdown is called back for holding, Muhammad races in again, this time from the 24. Cypress leads 13 to six. Pacifica comes right back on this pass from Mario Nava and nice catch by Willis. And Cody Johnson got them closer with this 12 yard run. But the Mariners are stopped when they attempt to pass on fourth and goal. Jeremy Davidson reaches in and tips the ball away. The Pacifica D stepped up too. In the second quarter, Cypress facing fourth and long deep in Mariner territory. Ortiz is forced out of bounds short of the first down. The score remains 13 to six going into the half. In the second half, Pacifica got big Luther Tolbert going. He pounds for about 10 here. A few plays later, he crashes through the line to score from the one. The Mariner crowd is pumped for that. That lead is cut 20 to 13. Muhammad was just a little too slippery though. He rushed for over 240 yards and five touchdowns in the contest. Cypress improves to 4-0 while Pacifica is now 3-1. Final regular season game for the Mariners is Valencia at Garden Grove High School. For the fifth quarter, I'm Katie Wolfong.